Good evening chaps and chapettes. Today I am doing the requested walk around of my Supra. Um, unfortunately the clips are going to be pretty bad because I can't really drive at the minute. I've basically got a, I've got a budget tire on one of the rear wheels because I got a puncture which was actually featured in one of the videos which you can watch up here. It's just coming into September, the MOT runs out in a few days and I can't really find anyone to do it in such a short amount of time. It's very dirty at the minute, as I say, it's coming off the road. There's a hose pipe ban in Yorkshire at the minute, so we can't even wash it really, unless I use a watering can. But that's that's a pain in the ass, and as I say, it doesn't really need to be clean. It's also running a bit dodgy, I've got a misfire. There's a lot of fiberglass work to be done, and as I say, I wanna possibly get it ready for paint just before it gets freezing cold. Before I strip the car apart, I'm gonna give it a quick overview um, so you guys can see what she is. Please bear in mind this car was fully built by myself, including a lot of help from my friends, especially people in this unit. Big shout out to all the boys, they know who they are. We'll start at the back of the car. I've turned the microphone around so that um, you can hear me a bit better because it's a directional microphone. It's quite echoey in here, so you'll probably just get a real weird sound. The majority of this video will be filmed in this perspective. Just to start with a basic scent, it's a 1994 Japanese import SZR, so it's a NA manual originally. Um, it's a pre-facelift, but uh, you can see I've got some facelift stuff on here. So unfortunately it did not come with the six speed that you see in the twin turbo Supra, so the V160 or the V161. Just a quick note, if it's a facelift NA manual, the SZRs come with the six speed box, which is obviously highly desirable nowadays. And then you're looking at five or six grand for one of them now. So we got stock wing, stock boot, stock bumper. And then this nice little Jap cannon down here. We've got a nice little carbon fibre surround um, just to make it look a bit spicier. But I, I really like the stock styling of this car. I've tried to sort of keep it rather stock throughout because I know some people go a bit overboard and they get all the big wings and stuff, but it's just not my taste. These cars look really good stock. So for the shoes, we are sitting on Autostar GT5s. These are a 19 inch rim. They're 10.5J on the back, 9.5J on the front. We've got Goodyear Eagle F1 asymmetric five tires. So that's 255, 235. Uh, so they are stretched. Um, they're pretty good tires actually, for a road tire anyways. I was gonna go semi-slicks. The problem is with semi-slicks, if it rains, you know, I'm not gonna be able to drive the car and I might be at a show or something. And then on the way back, it starts getting a bit moist. Yes, these wheels are reps of work S13 pace, but I cannot justify three and a half grand on a set of wheels at the minute especially because the bodywork looks like this. So yeah, that's why we're on fake. So brakes on the Algial, we've got LS400 calipers on the front, which uh, apparently bolt straight up. This did actually come with these already when I bought the car. Um, they're a bigger four pot caliper rather than the stock NA calipers. I do have the stock NA J-Spec ones on the rear. Um, I, I'm looking at upgrading both the front and rear to UK spec twin turbo caliper and brakes because they're actually rather affordable and you can still get them brand new from Toyota so it's a grand for the full set um, and that obviously is a lot cheaper than buying aftermarket performance brakes which realistically I don't need because I don't track the car so size skirts we've got fiberglass redox reps I believe these are from Grams um, and that also matches the front bumper which is also a redox rep from redox rep from Grams then we've got the stock pre-facelift headlights because I'm poor and I can't afford the the spicy facelift ones and we've got facelift indicators bonnet stock wing stock door stock everything else is stock we've got carbon fiber these are just carbon fiber weave covers over the, the stock mirrors but they look quite nice actually got a satellite sun strip which we do sell but this is a really old logo so the new one i'll probably be putting on when the car's painted we've got a few little stickers caffeine and machine great place if you've never visited there shout out v's club these guys did a full review of this super as well uh, well i walk around of it with some really good clips so uh, check out their channel i'll post a link up here we've got auto afford which is my friend's mechanic shop go check them out on google i'll put a link in the description got a few stickers for the uh, performance side so i'd like to keep all the performance stickers on this window i know some people are not keen on stickers but whatever stickers are cool so for suspension and stuff We've got BC Racing BRRM coilovers, which are just the street, street standard springs and everything, standard spring rate. 
Um, I've also done a full rear end restoration on this. Uh, that was stripped back everything, uh, re under well, I actually used PLR 15 three stage, whatever. It's like you basically, you treat the metal, you prime it with etch primer, and then you paint it using that POR15 magic stuff. Um, so that's up to about the sills. And the subframe was galvanized at a local firm. So they actually acid dip the full subframe to remove any sort of rust and pre-existing paint or oils or anything. And then they dip it in a hot bath of zinc, which gives it a really protective coating that will last for years. As far as I'm aware, zinc coating is actually a sacrificial layer of metals can oxidize prematurely to the, the actual metal that you want to keep in good condition underneath that was encoded in a clear etch primer and a clear lacquer just to give it an extra sort of bit of protection i then replaced every single arm and bushing with stock toyota arms which i actually bought from a fella in sheffield and they were Japanese import, they only had 30,000 kilometers on them or something, so they're really good condition. The problem is with these cars, you can't really replace the ball joints or you can't buy stock bushing, so you have to either go poly bushing or aftermarket arms. And I wanted to maintain, at the time, I wanted to maintain sort of like a stock suspension setup so that it sort of rode really nice. But as time goes on, I've got more power, maybe I need to look into upgrading them in the future and then obviously it's more replaceable and I haven't got to stick to stock and I can replace the bushings. I do have a white line anti-roll bar in this just because they look cool and the silver so it went with the full galvanite subframe look. Unfortunately I cannot get any pictures of this at the minute but I will post a link to my build thread on the Mark IV Super forums down below where I basically talk about the full thing as I was doing it. Um, I haven't updated it recently as I've, we've started doing this and it's a lot of effort, especially on like such an old forums. You've got to sort of like downgrade the pictures and everything. It takes, it's a lot of effort. So it got up to the point where I boosted it and then it stopped. So pretty much everything I've done so far is on there. While I have the wheel off, I can quickly show you. BC Racing Coil Lovers. This is the POR 15 all under here. Brady Bright Lines. Uh, and then there's the golf subframe. It's really dirty at the minute, but you sort of get the gist. Yeah, there you go. Talking about suspension, and it'll lead us nicely into the boot build. I've got stance parts, air cups, which are actually the reason why it looks like a 4x4 at the minute. So sorry, I haven't flipped the microphone around yet, but you can sort of see it's like a, a monster truck. But basically, I, ru I run this cab really low for cool fitment, obviously. And I don't want to fuck my bumper every time I go over a speed bump. As you can see, we've got some decent-ish ground clearance now it's not it's not perfect I will admit but it gets you over the majority of speed bumps and when I need to get into car parks and stuff and, and then you run the car on the road as you would without them so it's sort of like the reverse of bags but you still have this air compressor and tank which actually looks pretty cool it is quite annoying though when I go to a, a car show or something and someone comes up and goes, oh is it on bags why have you put a super on bags like fuck off my car do what I want so moving into the uh, the boot build, we have the stance parts air cups kit. So that's the compressor and the tank. Obviously they go off to the cups at the front. I then have a kicker low profile subwoofer. So that's actually just a single driver, but it, I don't know if you can see, but it, it's sort of the air pressure oscillates both drivers. So you actually get like a really deep tone from such a, sl like a slim profile. That's paired with the kicker, whatever that is, CXA600.i amplifier so i bought these two together off a friend um it works really well actually it's nice and low profile i don't know if you know but in the supers they've got like a huge hump uh the spare wheel usually fits around well the spare wheel's actually there at the minute but it sort of fits around that hump and you're sort of limited for space in the boot i didn't want to cut it out or anything this is what we've got i am thinking of putting in some slots down the side for cleaning products and tools because you always need them on an old car Yes, I did discuss the, the paint situation. It's rough, all right. Um, and, you know, stuff like this where I attempted to repaint the boot myself and I forgot to put the seal back in, which is quite funny. I am planning on repainting this winter, as I've discussed, so yeah, please excuse. Do a quick interior pass before we get into the spicy stuff. So in here we have three AEM gauges so we've got boost pressure oil pressure and air fuel ratio 
gauges so these are the x series really good gauges i've just got them as they i consider them my main my main shiznit so yeah there you go they look cool then we have the jti toucan which doesn't work at the minute it's wired up i did discuss it in one of the videos on here i can't quite get the settings to work on link my tuner is not available at the minute there's no point because it's coming off the road i'll do that next winter Gages custom satire clock pod which is pretty cool just some like a nice little easter egg shifter just an ebay shifter i'll get onto the transmission soon bride just some ebay bride thing to go with the uh the glove box and the armrest other than that we've got a super cup holder in there just custom made fire extinguisher stock seats stock wheel i will be getting an aftermarket wheel soon but this one does for now I suppose I better get on to the, the bit that everyone's waiting for. This is uh, quite a bit of talking to do, but here she is in all her glory. So yes, it is a 2JZGE non-VVTi. It is a GS300 Mark I 2JZGE. The reason why it's a different engine is because I wanted to build an engine and in the summer this was on the road and it was a nice idea to have a spare engine. So that's actually the super engine over there which had been replaced in Japan for some reason. So it wasn't actually matching numbers or anything so it didn't really matter too much. But the idea was I built this engine, had it on a stand. When I pulled the engine out of the car, the other one, I could have them side by side and I just pulled off that engine, put on what I needed and it actually made the process quite a bit easier as obviously there's stuff on a UK spec GS300 that isn't on this engine, such as a, an EGR. So it made it a lot easier to sort of see what I needed and what I didn't, so like the charcoal canister and whatnot. So we'll talk over the engine internals. It is pretty much stock on the inside. Um, as I say, I pulled the engine apart. I got everything machined. So I got line honing done. I got bore honing. The crank bearings are King Racing, same as the rod bearings. I have a standard Toyota rod and crank bolts. I didn't bother upgrading them to ARP because I didn't need to. Uh, stock pistons, GE, uh, stock rods. So obviously with this being the non-VVTi engine, it has the thicker GTE. Well, I don't know if they're the same as GTE rods, but I'm positive they are. They are the thicker rods, so it can hold boost. That's basically what I was getting at. Um, I do have a 2JZ GTE head gasket, which is thicker. It's a multi-layer steel rather than a single layer organic, which means that you can run a lower, well, it's a lower compression, so you can run more boost, basically. ARP head studs, obviously to stop head lift, and they're retorkable up to, I don't know, four or five times, which means that you need to pull the head off or whatever, which I did have to, because I'll, I'll, there's so many issues with this car that I've had, but I'll talk about that at another point. Basically, you can just re retort the head and you're all good for four or five times rather than just the single use stretch bolts, which are factory. Cams were stock. Cam pulleys, I don't know what these are. They came with the car, but they look cool. I've not, they've not adjusted them at all. They're just at the standard zero uh, offset. Just a G plus clear cam cover. Again, that was an eBay find. Don't know, it just looks cool. While I was rebuilding the engine, I put a brand new 2JZ GTE oil pump on it so that I could run the GTE crank position sensor that is then paired with the 7m gte cam position sensor you can use the stock 2jz ge distributor um you just take the cap off a forerunner which is a lot shorter you can fit the intakey stuff but this is a lot lower profile it's actually a desi de designated cam position sensor it just runs off the stock ge cams you can weld in cam position sensors on these heads or you can figure out like a whole effect sensor but that was too much for me and this works so why not i may be going vvti head on this soon who knows and they come with cam position sensors we do have the stock ge intake manifold which is rather annoying however i do plan on going forward facing i do have one sat here actually this is a gte one but i think I've, I've actually put this up for sale in a minute because i got it for quite cheap and it has the vvti intake manifold which is actually quite desirable i believe to some people if they're trying to maintain a stock build so rather than ruining that um, and having to buy an adapter plate for that i might as well just get a nice polished one that's made for a ge intercooler kit it is from garage with bits so the turbo kit that i bought was from garage with bits the full thing it came with a board borg warner s3600 i think um i don't know the specifics but you know it's 0.88 ar i think 
it comes as a kit. It was a lot easier than trying to figure out which one I needed. The exhaust manifold is a log manifold, um, which is not ideal. It sounds slightly different to what you'd expect a 2J to sound like. It's a lot deeper in tone. It's not my preferred tone, but it's different. It still screams. It's got a screamer pipe. So, I mean, moving on to the screamer pipe, there's a Turbo Smart 45mm wastegate. Again, the screamer pipe just points at the floor. Pretty cool. Came with the kit. Big old intercooler as well. Lovely. Just another thing to note, you can't just buy a Lexus GS300 2J and slam in a Supra because of the the sump, so the Supras have a different sump. Don't know if that's going to be useful to anyone, but you know, there's the info. I would like to quickly talk about the issues I had with the head. So this head is actually off my Supra engine, and the GS head is over there, because I got that one machined, and for some reason the valves were cut on like a weird angle, so they don't seal properly so i've had this head i had that head off like twice i had to re cut all the valves like manually lap them and they still wouldn't seal properly i had no compression on i think four of the five four of the six cylinders so yeah i just ended up just pulling this head off the super engine just putting it straight on here because it saved me a massive headache of having to take it back to the machine shop to argue it out with them even though they pressure tested it and it was fine i'm not gonna talk shit on them on YouTube but fuel system wise we've got a Walbra 255 LPH fuel pump in the boot that then goes through some AN8 braided lines up to the fuel well actually it goes into the fuel rail where we then have FIC 1000cc injectors which are a bit overkill for my build but they're there for future proofing again same with the fuel system it's sort of overkill other than the fuel pump but you know it's there AN8 lines back to the fuel pressure regulator which is a AAM just a standard fuel pressure regulator. Pretty pretty boring stuff, but it works, so. For uh, boost control, I have a Cyvex, just a regular boost on it. I'm pretty sure these are just Bosch, just Cyvex put the brand on it, but it was cheaper than the Link one, so why not? Uh, as already featured on the channel is the eBay catch cam, which is nicely zip tied up. I'll be making a proper bracket for this. That sort of goes over yonder. Uh, it doesn't work very well, but you know, whatever it's there. Radiator, just an eBay one, nice and thick boy. Twin fans, electric, controlled by the ECU. I did have the viscous fan on and the original radiator, but for some reason it kept overheating. I did have a water leak at the time, which in hindsight is probably the reason why it kept overheating, but you know, it's done now. We've got a nice big rad. As you can see, I do not have the heater core plumbed up at the minute because that's actually where the leak was. It was at the core. Uh, I have actually replaced the pipes that go to the core and the core itself but I've just been lazy and haven't plumbed it back up yet. I am rather paranoid that it's gonna leak again and cover my ECU in liquid, so you know. I'll just briefly go over the gearbox. It is a six speed E46 M3 420G manual transmission. That is paired with a PMC adapter kit that has a Satch's paddle clutch in it. I think it's rated up to 800 Newton meters or something of torque. Obviously that then bolts onto the 2J, manual box, nice and cheap. I have some adapter plates. The front one is, so the gearbox side is from Autosports Engineering in America. And then the rear one is actually custom machine from a company in Hull. Target Engineering actually designed that plate and my friend Chris gave it to me nicely. And then I basically got another duplicate made. DNF prop shafts in Leeds made the prop shaft. It's a single piece, single piece sliding yoke um, prop shaft. It works, whatever, it's cool. I do have a whiff bits oil sandwich plate down there. I do not recommend them, it leaks. I don't know whether it's just sandwich plates in general. I've heard bad things of all sandwich plates, so I'm not pointing the finger at whiff bits. You know, I need somewhere to get oil pressure from. I could get it from somewhere else, but that's the easiest method. I'll probably be getting it up on the ramp when the S13's off there and doing sort of sorting out all the leaks because it, it does leak quite a lot. So to go with the gearbox, there is a Willwood Racing, I think it's a 0.650 displacement master cylinder which has an adapter plate which i got from srd tuning that then goes down to the stock bmw slave i then got a custom line made cannot remember the company but i basically just told them the fittings on each side and then put a piece of string and just measured the length so that i knew how long i needed it so that's just a braided hose differential wise at the other end we have a a torsen a01b super diff internals with a Lexus GS430 or an LS400, can't remember which one it is, basically for the longer final drive so you can get longer gears, especially paired with the Beamer box, which is a six speed. You'd have the same issue if you put an V160. It's just how the game is, but it's a cheap way of getting maintaining the LSD out of the Supra and getting longer final drive rather than buying the Supra twin turbo diff, which is like three grand now, which I do not see the point in. 
I suppose we better get into the ECU side of things. So there's just a cheap Bosch air temperature sensor there drilled in. We have the Link 3 bar map sensor and then obviously we are running the Link G4X ECU. Fantastic ECU, I have no grudges against it. Uh, the car was tuned by SAD Tuning down in Haywards Heath, so that's south of London. Them guys are great, uh, especially Mike, who really helps me out when I was trying to get the car running. You know, he spent countless amounts of nights remote connecting free of charge to help me get this car running and then got the car trailer down there he fully tuned it uh, got it MOT'd and everything uh, fixed a load of issues on it didn't charge too much however it was yeah rather expensive but you know that's what you get when you take cars to specialists I forgot to talk about it but this car actually made 480 horsepower at the wheels on the dyno can't remember the total figure somewhere over there or thereabouts I do hope to get 550 wheel when I go forward facing but I feel like that'll be like the absolute limit for me. Like I'm already struggling at 480. I do have a bit of rear camber, so I do struggle with traction. I do want to fix that at some point, but you know, we're already quite close to the uh, limit. The engine bay paint is actually painted by Jack, who, that's his space over there. Obviously you know who Jack is if you're uh, familiar on the channel. Here's BMW Mineral Grey. And as much as I'd like to keep the paint a secret, the full cars go in that colour because it looks absolutely insane, especially in the light. It's quite hard to see in here, it's very dirty, but yeah, when this car's fully finished in it, it'll look absolutely mint. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's everything. Um, I'm probably going to find something in when I'm editing the video and be like, why did I forget to do that? But you know, I'm pretty sure I've hit most of the points. If not, leave a comment and I'll answer it. The S13 is on the ramp at the minute in my area. The reason why we've done this is because Jack and Amelia are working on this and I can't really work around the car to do all the body prep and whatnot with the big posts in the way so we've decided to switch areas temporarily. Jack's obviously going to do all the welding and whatnot for this. He can obviously spray the engine bay and everything while it's on the ramp. It's a lot easier to get access. It's a lot easier for me to work around my car here. There's a lot of space. It's a win-win. Unfortunately, I can't get under the car, but you know, I don't really need to at the minute. That'll be getting done just before the next season, so Easter time next year. So, thank you for watching this video. I know it's not been very exciting. It is just a quick walk around of the Supra. And, you know, hopefully I enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please leave a like on this video. Leave any comments, if any questions you've got about the car that I haven't hit in this video. As I say, there is a full build thread down below in the description. If you're really interested in the nitty gritties of what I've done, please subscribe if you would like to continue seeing footage from Satire. We basically discuss everything in this unit. This is a project. This is a project. This is a project. There's countless amounts of projects in here. We will be probably going on for a fair few years, so you know we have we have a lot of shit to do. If you're interested, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you know when we upload. And follow us on Instagram, satire underscore UK, so you can keep up to date with everything that we're doing. Thank you, and goodbye.